Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In my last video, I presented the tools of the trade, the must-have and the really nice-to-have stuff for soldering. I also gave you a brief introduction to PC board construction so you'll have a good idea of what's going on when you're soldering on a PC board. In this video, I'm going to actually be performing some soldering demonstrations so you can see how it's done. Add your questions or comments below. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's start our demonstration with how to tin a wire. So the first step of tinning a wire is to strip the wire, being careful not to nick any of the conductors of the wire. The second step is to dress the wire. So what you're doing is you're taking your little fingers and you're twisting it, twisting the uh, individual strands of the wire until you get a nice, nice uh, compact wire end. Then we're going to take our solder paste. I like doing this because it makes it go nice and fast and just a quick in and out. I just want a little tiny bit of the solder paste on my wire, especially because this is really old wire. Now we're ready to do the soldering process. Then I'll take my soldering iron and I'll clean the tip real well. Put a nice glob of solder on the end of my soldering iron because this solder on the end of my soldering iron is actually going to contribute to the solder that goes in to tin the end of my wire. And then I'm going to put the soldering iron underneath the wire and then try to add the solder, the additional solder to the top. I'm going to start at the end and move in. And looks like I could use just a little bit more. Now, because I don't want a lot of solder on this, what I will often do, if I can get it in the picture, here it is. What I will often do is kind of go along like this, get it nice and hot, and give it a little bit of a flick like that. And so now you can see that there's very little solder. You can actually see the strands of the wire, but it is completely impregnated with solder. Lastly, we're going to take this and we're going to clean it with some isopropyl alcohol. So I take my, my paper towel, I put a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it, my 99% isopropyl alcohol, and then clean that off so I have a nice, beautiful solder, soldering job on my wire and it's nice and clean and ready to be put wherever I need to put it. So let's now put a wire. This is my wire. I have already stripped and tinned it appropriately. We're going to put it onto this terminal strip. Now this is an older terminal strip, so I had to spend a fair amount of time with my pen eraser and some solder and some flux to clean that all up so that it would solder real nice. Otherwise, it just tends to bead the solder up. And so now this is all nicely tinned. This is nicely tinned and all cleaned. We're now going to put this onto our terminal strip. So to begin with, we put it through the terminal strip like this, and we bring it around. And I'm going to use my needle nose pliers so you can actually see what I'm doing here. We bring this around, and we bring it all the way around. So we're actually wrapping, wrapping it around the post here. we end up with a good mechanical connection, as you can see here. So it, it went in from this side, 
through the hole in the terminal strip around this end post and all the way across and then squeezed flush with the entire terminal strip just like that. You say, well, you got that thing sticking out on the side here and you're right. That's where we take our side cutters and we cut the end of the wire flush with the side of the terminal strip. So it looks like that. Now at this point, it is a matter of just heating that up and adding solder. So we clean off our soldering iron and we heat this up. And it should solder in place just lickety split with nice fillets all the way around the wire. And that's the beauty of, of tinning everything ahead of time. Once everything has been tinned ahead of time, then generally speaking, all you're having to do is heat it up and add a little bit more solder and everything just kind of comes together just like that. Now, with that done there, our next step is cleaning it. Of course, we always want to clean the excess flux off. So we give it a little bit of squirt of, of isopropyl alcohol. We take our, our acid brush, our trimmed acid brush, and uh, we clean this thoroughly so we don't have any residual flux left on our soldering at all. And I like to take my canned air and just blow that clean of even the residual alcohol. So there you go, a wire to a terminal strip. All right, now, now let's connect two wires together. It begins with stripping and tinning our two pieces of wires. And once they're stripped and tinned, I trim them so that both pieces of wire are the same length. Then I cut a piece of shrink tubing. I don't like tape. I use shrink tubing every chance I get. So I cut a piece of shrink tubing that's at least twice as long as the bare wire is. Now I'm going to position them in my second set of hands so that they're aligned with one another. But first I take my shrink tubing and I make sure I put my shrink tubing on and get it as far away from where the soldering is going to take place. I don't want this to be melting or, or shrinking because of the soldering process. And so now I'm going to position these using my second set of hands here so that they are lined up with one another and right next to each other in the, in the fixture. Then, once I've done that, again, I clean off my soldering iron, put a nice big glob of solder on there. You can see how big that glob is because that is going to form what's going on here. And I'm gonna put that underneath and then add the solder on top. And that will end up forming the connection, just like that, all done. Because we tinned each wire ahead of time, it takes almost no time for these things to solder together. Now we let that completely cool and then we clean, as before, with our isopropyl alcohol and a piece of paper towel. So we come in here and we take our wires out and we want to make sure that we get all the excess flux off of that connection. So in the end, we should end up with a, a really nice, bright, shiny connection, fully uh, impregnated with the solder. Now that it has completely cooled, I can pull my heat shrink tubing up and then make sure that my solder connection is centered on the heat shrink tubing. 
I'm going to hold this in place with my extra set of hands. And then we use the heat gun to shrink that into place. Now with the heat gun, remember the output of these heat guns is really hot, so you have to be really careful not to overheat this. So we're just going to kind of pass it on there and we're gonna come from various directions. This particular heat gun gets hot enough that it will actually melt solder. So I have to be especially careful with this for that reason. Don't wanna overheat it, just shrink it in place. Make sure you get all the various sides when you do that. Let your heat gun cool before shutting it off and putting it away. Let this thoroughly cool here. And so now you have your two wires connected together. Let me show you a quick example of soldering a wire to a board. The same principle applies when soldering a leaded component to a board. The first step is to make sure that the pads and the board are cleaned and prepped. So I take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I wipe off the board to make sure that there are no finger marks or oils or anything. I clean the board thoroughly. Now that I've cleaned the board thoroughly, once the isopropyl alcohol is fully evaporated, I'll then take my flux pen and I'll apply a little bit of flux to the board on both sides. There we go. Now for dealing with a wire, the first thing we want to do is tin the wire. And a properly tin wire, if it's done absolutely right, you can look at it and you can actually see the various strands of the stranded wire. We place the wire through the board. We clean off our soldering iron. We add a little bit of solder back to the iron. Now we're going to heat on the bottom side of the board, on the lead, and add solder to the top side of the board. So I take my soldering iron here and I get it on the lead. And it should heat up fairly quickly. The object is to get a very nice little fillet. There we go, look at that. On top and bottom, once the it has been soldered in place, we take our side cutters. We do not cut it flush to the board. We cut it a little bit away from the fillet on the bottom. Be careful that that will fly. And so we have the soldering connection on the bottom. We have a nice fillet on top and the wire is well soldered in place. But we're not done yet. The next part of the process is to be sure to clean the excess flux off of the board. You can do that with your brush. And then wipe off your board. Should be nice and bright and sunshiny connection with a nice fillet on both sides. All right, so let's solder a component to a board. We have our PC board here. I have my resistor that I want to put in. You want to dress the leads of the resistor so that they're the vertical part is at the right place in the board. And as before, we're going to clear, clean the spot where that's going to go on both sides. All right, now we want, might want to also clean the 
leads of the resistor, if it's been hanging around, it's been in your, in your uh, junk box or whatever. So we have nice clean leads. Now, we, uh, as before, we take our flux pen and we put a little bit of flux on the pads on both sides. Make sure I'm on the right pads here. We place the resistor in place in R11 in this case. You say, well, this is all floppy and everything. It, it wants to fall out. One way that you can kind of eliminate some of that floppiness is take the leads and just, well, after you get it through the board, pull on them a little tightly and splay them out so that they're kind of splayed out a little bit. And now, not nearly as floppy as they were. Now we're going to heat on the bottom and add solder to the top. And so I have properly prepared and tinned my soldering iron. I'm going to heat the bottom. And I'm going to add solder to the top. We have to wait for everything to get nice and hot here. There we go. A nice solder fillet to the top. And then we go to the other end and do the same thing. We heat the bottom, add solder to the top. There we go. So you can see the nice solder fillets on the top and there are nice solder fillets on the bottom. We come in here and again, we trim the leads a little bit away from the top of that fillet. Do not trim them flush to the board. We then take our isopropyl alcohol and we clean the connection. We don't want any residual flux left over. We clean the connection on both the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to pad, pad it dry, or what you can do, if you have a, a can of, of canned air, it's a lot faster and easier than a, a paper towel. And so there you go, a nice solder connection for your resistor on this board. Well, you don't have to clean every connection each time you solder it on a PC board. You can solder an entire PC board, all the parts on the board, and then clean the whole board at once. To do this, you take several layers of paper towel, put them on the bench, set your board at an angle on the bench, take your isopropyl alcohol, and kind of douse the board with isopropyl alcohol, and take your, your acid brush, your trimmed acid brush, and brush the board and add more isopropyl alcohol as necessary to get all the flux off the board. Flip the board over, do it to the other side of the board so everything's nice and clean. And then I like to use canned air to, to blow off the rest of the isopropyl alcohol. It blows it out from underneath the parts and it dries the board at the same time, your board is completely ready. Now that's how we're putting parts on a board, uh, but then there is the other problem of taking parts off of a board. Now with, with parts with just two leads, like the resistor that we put on this board, that's really easy. You just heat the lead and grab the, the lead and pull it out with your needle nose pliers no big deal. And then after you're done with that, you heat that pad up real good and you use your solder sucker to suck the, the, the barrel clean on the board if you're looking to reuse that or replace a part on the board. The biggest issue that most people struggle with are the multi-pin parts like ICs. This this can be a real pain in the back sides. Now, if the part is a known to be bad part, you know the part's bad, you're not trying to salvage it, 
All you want to do is get the part off so that you can put a new part on. Well, that's where your handy dandy, nice, sharp, and small side cutters come in. You just sit there and cut all of the pins off of the body of the part, take the body of the part off, and now you can remove one pin at a time. Heat up the pad, pull the pin out, use your solder sucker to suck the solder out of the, out of the hole. Good to go, nice and clean. And then after you've got most of the solder off, you go back with your solder wick, using your solder wick to clean off the rest of the, the stuff off of the pad. Repeat that for every pin of the device. And then when you're done, you clean up the entire footprint for that part with your isopropyl alcohol and your acid brush to get it ready to put the new part in place. The problem we run into is that we have a part that we want to salvage. We don't really care too much about the board because we just want the part off the board to use it somewhere else. Well, that's where it gets a little bit more tricky because now we can't cut the parts off the, the board. You have to heat the pin, use your solder sucker to pull the solder through. The mistake that a lot of people make is they don't heat the pin thoroughly enough to get the solder completely molten. Now, one of the tricks, if the board had been created using lead-free solder, the melting temperature is going to be significantly higher. Add a little leaded solder to it. Heat that up and add a little leaded solder to it, and that will dilute the lead-free solder and make it so that it'll, it'll melt faster for you. And then once you're sure that it is thoroughly molten, the trick is getting your your solder sucker onto the pin that you want to suck the solder off of fast so that it doesn't have a chance to cool before the solder sucker does its solder sucking. Then once you have successfully gotten the solder sucked out of the pinhole as best you can, you can follow up with some, with some solder wick to wick the solder off and try to get more solder off of that. Uh, you can use a small screwdriver to kind of push the, the pin to one side while you heat the pin so that the pin isn't in contact with the sides of the hole through the board and kind of keep that pin in place and moving while the, the, the pad cools. Once you do that one, one pin at a time, you finally get through the whole thing and it, it comes off the board. It is not an easy process and the more pins that there are to deal with, the more difficult it, it can get. Let things cool a little bit between pins because you can easily overheat a, a chip by trying to do them all at once. So that's the way I do it when I have to do all of this. So there you go. Uh, you clean those pins just like with the single ones. You clean them up with the, the solder sucker, the solder wick, some isopropyl alcohol, clean all the, the excess uh, flux off of the board, prepare for the new chip to be put into place. One thing I didn't cover in this video is soldering the venerable PL259, also known as the VHF mail connectors, onto coax. This is because I've already provided two videos on this subject. The first is soldering the PL259 onto RG8 style coax. I put the link to this video up here in the corner for you. The second is soldering the PL259 onto smaller coax like RG58. The link to this video is up there in the corner as well. For more information on good soldering, check out NASA's General Soldering Workmanship Requirements. I've put a link in the description for you. Of course, some of what is unacceptable for NASA is perfectly okay for us experimenters because our projects are not likely to be shot into space. IPC.org 
sets the manufacturing industry standard for soldering and soldering practices. I put a link in the description to this as well. The best way to develop good soldering skill is to follow good procedures and then practice, practice, practice. Find out what works and do that. If you found this video helpful, do click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.